That's right. It depends on you and your effort. Your efforts to fill locally today and share the new skin opportunity with people of Indian origin right here in our very own market. That's New Skin's India market and her, that you can effectively grow right now as we're preparing to launch again in, in, in India in 2025. So let's jump in. Next slide, please. Okay, first, we are, how the call is going to go today is I'm going to jump in like we're doing and, and teach you all about the opportunity then uh, that we have in India. Then you're going to learn about the culture and some of the things uh, that you might need to know that's different in India versus where you live. And then I'm going to jump back in and share an incentive that we have with the launch of India. So first, let's talk opportunity. Uh, let's talk opportunity about the country of India. Okay, you guys, as you can see on the screen, there are 1.4 billion people in India. Now, when I first heard that, I didn't really think much of it. I thought, wow, that's a really big number. So then I went and Googled, because I didn't know this off the top of my head. I went and Googled how many people are in U.S. and Canada together. Does anyone know that? In U.S. and Canada combined, there are about 372 million people. So that means not only is India the largest population in the entire world, there are four times more people in India than the U.S. and Canada combined. So there are a lot of uh, people. Now, let's look at the next slide, and we're going to look at how India's population differs. And what you're going to find is that India has a very young population. The median age in India is just 28. And in India altogether, there are 910 million people that are millennials and Gen Z. And out of those, 440 million are millennials. Now, 65% of the population in India is under the age of 35. So we are talking about a very large population who is young and eager and probably just, you know, starting off in their very first careers in India. Next slide, please. So in terms of the economic classes, India is made up of about uh, 300 to 350 million people in their middle class, okay? And in their middle class, the income ranges from about $7,000 to $22,000 a year, and those are U.S. dollars. And just to, to compare that, let's think of China. I think we opened... Uh, China was one of the last countries that we opened, and if you think of, you know, China, and it's a little bit different, it, their middle uh, income for their class is 15000 to 74000 So India is significantly lower. And when you think of in terms of the U.S., if you go on and Google what the U.S. is, it's also extremely lower than our middle class here. So when we get ready to launch next year in India, we're definitely gonna need to look at the right product mix and making sure that we have the right product going into that market and our teams are working um, on that at the moment. Okay, next slide. So India's middle class device is expected to double in the next 20 years. That is a lot of people. And by 2043, India's gig workforce is expected to grow 200%. So again, those are a lot of additional um, additional jobs and additional ways to earn money is going to grow by 200%. So that is very common in India, and they are already doing lots of different jobs there. So you're going to see that this is going to be a significant growth and a huge opportunity. All right, next slide. So this is where, um, you guys, this is really important to make sure that we're following all the rules and regulations to make sure that we are ready. So as I stated earlier, business activities within India today, which include Zoom events, which include virtual events, are strictly prohibited. We cannot do anything inside of India today. So what you can do, is build locally in your market 
but I want you to think slowly, okay? So if we go to the next slide, what does that mean? Um, think locally by inviting people who are India eligible to become a brand affiliate today and help develop them into first generation brand rep or hire. And I'm gonna use that term a lot today, India eligible, India eligible. And we're gonna explain it here in just a moment, okay? Um, but again, you are gonna be inviting people that are India eligible to be brand affiliates today in any open market. Now, did you know that, actually go ahead and back up for me. Did you know that there are more people of Indian origin who live outside of India than any other group of people in the world? I'm gonna say that again, because it's huge. Did you know that there are more people of Indian origin who actually live outside of India than anywhere else in the world? So when we look at where, where are all of these people, you can see from the graph here. There are almost 1 million people of Indian origin living in Australia and New Zealand. There are 3.5 million people, uh, Indian origin people who live in Europe and Africa. There are uh, 3.75 million Indian origin people who live in Asia. And with the largest number of people with an Indian origin live right here in North America, over 6 million people. So let's jump in and say, who is classified as people of Indian origin? Let's take a look. Okay, so there are um, three different types of India eligible people that can directly build in India when we are officially open. And each one of these individuals must have a very specific identification card. So let's walk through these. First, you have an OCI, which means it's overseas citizen of India. Second is a PIO, which is a person of Indian origin. And third is a non-resident Indian or a, an NRI, and they currently have an Indian passport. So individuals that are living outside of India today that hold one of these three types of IDs these are the individuals that will be eligible to build directly in India when we open. So let's go to the next slide. So what does that mean for you? Well, until we open, right? We're not, we're, we don't know when we're opening in 2025. Um, so what do I do between now and then? Well, your goal should be to find individuals who hold one of these three types of ID that we just talked about who currently live in an open market. When I say open, that means currently eligible to do business in a market. So maybe they live in the US, maybe they live in Canada, maybe they live in Australia or France because those are markets that we are open in. So start looking for individuals, um, like I said, that are one of these three types of ID who live in an open market and share the new skin opportunity with them. Invite them to be a brand affiliate on your team and you sign them up just like normal, okay? Once they're on your team, you're gonna do exactly what you do with everybody else. You're gonna help them begin to build your business or to build their business, uh, teach them how to sell products, teach them how to bring others on and help them succeed. Then they'll need to go in and confirm their India market eligibility by going online and submitting their India eligible ID, right? So that's that OCI card, that PIO card, or an Indian passport. Then when India opens in 2025, these affiliates will be able to open an Indian business builder account authorizing them to work directly in India. So if you wanna take a picture of this QR code here on the screen, uh, that is going to take you to the website where your brand affiliate who is India um, eligible would actually then go and put in their 
um, identification. And we actually have a little video. So if we go to the next slide, we have a video of um, how someone who is India eligible would go in and upload their ID. Now, most importantly, if you're currently working today uh, at New Skin and you are not India eligible, you don't need to do anything here. This is only for those that you bring onto your team and are and have one of the three identification cards. This is the step that they we, that they would need to do. So let's take a look at the video. Okay, so you guys can see that that was super simple, right? So um, now don't worry, we're gonna make sure you guys have access to that little video. So you, again, can keep ringing on new affiliates like you are today. And those that are India eligible, you just shoot them that link and it shows them directly how to then go in and upload their ID. Okay, so we talked about this massive opportunity that we have in India. And up next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the culture. And here to do that, please welcome Andrew P, who is our global head of customer insights. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks, Ricky. I am so very excited to be here with you today to talk about India and her culture. You might be wondering why I'm here sharing this with you. Well, all of you know better than me that this is a business of connections and relationships. And the best way to connect with people is by understanding their culture. And my hope is that you'll be able to use some of what I share with you today to connect with Indians or those of Indian origin in open new skin markets as we prepare to open the Indian market. So why am I here talking about India and our culture with you today? What's what qualifies me to even talk about that. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, you might notice that I am Indian. So I was born in India and I grew up in India. In fact, I've spent two thirds of my life in India. Um, I've also spent a little bit of time in Europe and I'm, I currently live in the US. Uh, but when, when I think about India, I think about it as a country, but sometimes it can also feel like a continent. Uh, each of India's states are diverse and varied in themselves. So for context, uh, I was born in Bangalore, which is the capital of the state of Karnataka. Uh, I grew up in Pondicherry, which is a union territory that's close to the state of Tamil Nadu, and I did my undergrad in Chennai. If you look at the map of India and the chart, you'll see there are kind of three distinct red dots on your right, and that kind of sums up the majority of my time in India. Um, it's it's all it's all within two two states and a union territory, but to put this in geographical context, this would have been like me being born in Spain, growing up in France, and going to school in Belgium. Um, and I spent three years in Belgium, so I can tell you there's a lot of similarities between those countries, but there's also a lot of differences, and India is like that. 
Um, there's going to be a lot of diversity. When you look at India and where I spend most of my time and put that in context of the bigger India map on your left, and you'll notice that most of my time has been spent in that very southernmost part of India. In fact, I hadn't been to the north of India or the capital of India, Delhi, which you see as a star on the map, until new, until um, I started going there with new students. Back in 2018, 2019, when we first started doing our due diligence on India, was actually the first time that I'd been to New Delhi. Um, and it, it was an eye-opening experience for me as well, just understanding the differences and the diversity that's at play there. So geographical diversity, that is something to look forward to. And, and I think it's it's something that gives you different perspectives and different mindsets the more you interact with that diversity. If you go to the next slide, um, when we talk about diversity, I would say the second most question that I get asked when um, people introduce themselves to me or I introduce myself to them is, do you speak Indian? Um, so no, I do not speak Indian because Indian is a, not a language, but India does have 22 official languages with hundreds of dialects and sub-languages. Um, based on what I shared with you in my prior slide, you will notice that I grew up in a part of India that speaks Tamil. So Tamil is my native language. I also grew up speaking English, which is why I'm speaking English with you here today. But if you look at this slide, you, you've got four different languages saying hello, and they are very distinct, right? They have different character sets even. We're looking at Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, and Telugu, which if you look at the map, those are just four of the languages in four of India's southernmost states. So think about the rest of India and those remaining 18 languages of diversity that that's going to bring. Um, the good news is most Indians speak Hindi and English, so if you speak English, you'll be able to make it in most places. If you go to the next slide, India, from a religion perspective, is also relatively diverse. We have um, the majority of religion is Hinduism, but depending on where you go in India, you're going to find some very strong offshoots of other religions. Um, I myself, I was raised Catholic from a part of India uh, that, that was in the South. Um, you'll have a lot of these different religions brought, and the constitution of India states that it is a secular state, but given that 80% of the population are Hindu, you'll find uh, predominantly Hindu views uh, as you go across the country, and that is something to keep in mind as you look at how you approach and how you try to connect with people is just understanding and knowing a little bit more about Hinduism and the culture and the traditions that, go, that are associated with it. And when we talk about religion, if we go to the next slide, I also want to spend a little bit of time talking about India's people. Now, I look Indian, um, so, so do all the people on this slide. In fact, the person on the left that you'll notice is from Rajasthan, and he's wearing a traditional Rajasthani turban. Now, when I say turban, most people are probably thinking of the turbans that Sikhs wear, but this is also a different kind of headgear that is traditional to Rajasthan. You'll also notice different skin tones and facial features across the people on this slide. In fact, uh, the lady on the left middle is wearing a traditional Nawari sari that is particular to the state of Maharashtra, which is where, uh, which is where Mumbai is. But the lady on the right um, is actually oh, wearing sure, something yeah. that's more traditional in Tamil Nadu. It's actually called a Bawada Bawa Dala. Um, and you'll see on the right most is also someone who is from India. Um, when I showed my picture, uh, when I showed this picture to my wife who's Chinese, she said, no way, that's, that's an Indian person. But yes, that is someone from the Indian state of Meghalaya. Um, and she might look Chinese, but that is someone who's also Indian. So as you think about India and its people, um, understand that we come in different colors, different skin tones, different facial features, and that's something to understand as you go and talk to people about the culture and, and as you try to connect with them. Um, if you go to the next slide, this is probably my most favorite thing to talk about when we talk about Indian culture. I am a huge foodie, and Indian cuisine is probably one of the best cuisines in the world. 
Um, in fact, I just flew into India yesterday um, to do some work, to do some research work, and I landed at three in the morning. And the first thing I did when I got here was order some Indian food as room service. That's how good it is. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of butter chicken masala and naan, but there's more to that. Uh, there's more to that uh, in Indian cuisine. Uh, we've got biryani, we've got dosas, we've got idlis, we've got chaat, rajma chawal. The, the possibilities are endless. And this is where India's diversity really helps because each state almost has its own signature dish. Um, and if that's not motivation for you guys to like understand pick and figure out how we can help open the market, I don't know what is because when we're there, uh, and if I'm here in India at the same time as you guys are, I will take you to some really good spots and we'll have an awesome time connecting and bonding over food. Um, if we go to the next slide, one thing that I also want to touch about is the Indian market as a whole. Now, Ricky mentioned that the average middle class income in India is 7,000 to 22,000 US dollars. Um, and that is is, is a lot lower than what it, what it is in China or even the U.S., like Ricky mentioned. And purchasing power parity plays a little bit of a role in terms of like allowing Indians to buy more with that, with lesser dollars. Uh, but it is still something that we need to be conscious about. And from a, from a product pricing perspective, from an opportunity price positioning perspective, India is going to be different. It's going to need to be different. In fact, this picture right here, I think, sums up India really well. It's a dichotomy and the spectrum and the extremes of the spectrum are right there for everyone to see, right? This is a picture of Mumbai and you see slums right in the middle of the picture, right next to high rises. And that that is some something that you would expect to see in India as you go in, is just that dichotomy of the market. and something for us to, us to, to understand from a cultural perspective. Uh, if we go to the next slide, I've talked a lot about India and its diversity and how big it is and how massive the potential is. Uh, don't let that scare you because in India we have a saying, unity and diversity. A lot of what makes us different is also what connects us within the country. We have different religions, we have different languages, we have different food, but we have connecting factors across all of it. In fact, in the pictures here, you see a uh, a Santa Claus celebrating Christmas with a Hindu priest, or Muslims celebrating Diwali, which is a festival of lights. Uh, we've also got cricket and Bollywood and, and Tollywood and, and a bunch of Indian um, film opportunities for you to connect with. In fact, that's something that I would say if you want to try and connect with someone, those are some really good conversation starters. Go and start, start talking to someone about cricket or Bollywood, and I'm sure they'd love to talk to yours off about it. Um, go into the next slide, just as a wrap up of what we say when we talk about India, as Ricky mentioned, India has a very young population. They're also very tech savvy. In fact, I like to think as India almost has skipping a step in the digital journey. Um, mobile penetration is so invasive even in rural areas. In fact, you might find people who have mobile phones and don't have refrigerators in their home. Um, and it's going to be diverse. India is going to be simple and complex at the same time. It's going to be everything you think it is and everything you think it's not. But I would say lean into it. Go in with a curious mindset and understand that that unity, that unity and diversity is something that you'll be able to really leverage and connect. Um, Ricky also talked about us not being open in India. So obviously focusing the efforts in new skin open markets. Uh, what does that mean? And Ricky talked a little bit about OCI, NRI, and PIO. If we go to the next slide, interestingly, my family is actually a really good example of these three different classifications. Uh, because like I mentioned earlier, I grew up in India. I spent some time in Belgium. Um, I spent some time in Belgium because my dad has lived a large part of his life in Belgium as well. In fact, he is a Belgian citizen. Uh, he had to give up his Indian citizenship because India does not allow dual citizenship. So he gave up his Indian citizenship and became a Belgian citizen. But his connection to India is through an OCI card, so an Overseas Citizen of India card. 
I'm in a, I'm in the same boat. Um, my dad became a Belgian citizen before I turned 18, so I was actually able to take on the Belgian citizenship by giving up my Indian citizenship. So I'm also an OCI card holder. Um, my daughter is also an OCI uh, is also eligible to be an OCI card holder because her father and her grandfather were our OCI card holders and had held Indian citizenship at some point in time. My mother, who you see on the right of this picture, uh, chose not to give up her Indian citizenship. So she actually has an Indian passport, but she lives with us in the US right now. So she is a non-resident Indian here in the US on a visa. And my wife is also eligible to have a PIO card, a person of Indian origin card. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about the PIO card here because technically it is not something that is available anymore. So the Indian government doesn't issue those anymore, but there are PIO cards that they've already issued out there that are in circulation. So you can bring in someone who has a PIO card and, and they would be eligible to work in India when we open the market. Uh, the reason I have that called out for my wife is that it's just to make that example that we have this card available. It's going to be, it's very similar to an OCI card. There are a few minute differences in terms of what the technicalities of the two cards do. But going forward, the government is actually merging both the OCI card and the PIO card together. So when Alice gets her, my wife gets her card, it'll actually be an OCI card. At a high level, the process is relatively straightforward. If you go to Google and search OCI card, you'll have a link that's brought up in the US. It's BFS Global Services. Um, that'll kind of take you to a website that, that walks you through all the different documentation required to, to get an OCI card and what the process looks like. Um, at a high level, the documentation is either your renunciation certificate, if you're a prior Indian citizen, or it is uh, the birth certificate of your ancestor who was an Indian citizen to be able to tie your um, overseas citizenship of Indian eligibility to. And after that, after you fill in the form, you can either do the process online or uh, through mail or visit the um, one of your embassies to have an in-person appointment. So with that context, hopefully that contextualizes the different type of people that you will be able to uh, recruit and bring on in open new skin markets. Um, if we go to the next slide, now, as Ricky mentioned, um, while I'm not helping with the India project and the market launch, my day job at new skin is actually the global head of customer insights. And what that means is I look at a lot of data, market research, surveys, um, and, and try to help new skin the business make some decisions that are driven by data. And I thought I'd do the same for you guys to help give you a little bit of context on what data we could use of Indians in North America to help uh, to help to your efforts as you go and bring them and share the new skin opportunity with them. Um, the first thing to talk about is the diaspora of Indians in North America. Ricky mentioned that there's 6.3 million Indians living in North America, and that's the biggest out of all the other um, non-Indian countries that you'll find Indians in. Um, more specifically, in the U.S., you'll find concentrations of Indians, as you see in the map here, on the coasts in Texas and in Chicago. In fact, across the Bay Area, New York, New Jersey, and Chicago, that represents like a third of all the Indians or Indian origin people living in the U.S. In Canada, across the provinces of uh, British Columbia, Alberta and Ontario is where you'll find the biggest um, groups. And Ontario, even though it's a little, it's a shade lighter than British Columbia in terms of overall density, there is quite a big density or an Indian contingent in the Toronto area. And that might be something if you've got connections to focus your efforts on. Uh, so understanding the geographical um, density and the diversity of the Indian diaspora in North America, if we go to the next slide, there's something else that's also interesting about the Indian or Indian origin people in Canada. You'll recall that when I talked about the diversity of India, of the religion in India, you'll notice that it was predominantly Hindu with 80% maybe being Hindus. 
In Canada, it's actually a little bit different. We have 36, uh, more than a third of the population are actually Sikhs. So when you talk, when you try and connect and form relationships with Indian Canadians uh, and their Sikh, there's probably a different approach you want to take to, to forming that connection. Um, now, I myself have spent a lot of time with uh, in Punjab or with Sikh people, but the few Sikh friends I have, there's definitely a common theme of courage and compassion and friendliness and kindness. And that's probably a good starting point to start to form that connection with those potential uh, relationships that you could start with. Um, in the U.S., there's also a little bit of difference when you think about Indians living in the U.S., which if in the next slide, you'll notice that the distribution of Indian immigrants versus all people in the U.S. versus other immigrants, um, Indians tend to favor certain occupations in the U.S., in fact, it's almost exclusively um, more than three quarters of the Indian immigrants are either in management, business, science occupations. So what does that mean in terms of talking to them about the connection, the opportunity? You might have to tailor your, your message or your opportunity a little differently, given that so few of them are in service occupations or sales and office occupations, and the majority of them are in management and business occupations. So something to consider as you talk to potentials, uh, potential prospects in the US. So wrapping all of this up together, right? The reason that I'm here to talk to you today is to say, well, what can you do to help to start building that cultural connection, to start building that relationship with potential Indians in your market? If you go to the next slide, um, I think it really boils down to what Indians and those of Indian origin value, right? And, and, it's, and it's really around the themes of stability, security, professional and personal growth, family and education, connections and relationships. So when you talk about New Skin and the opportunity and, and the plan to open India, how would you connect those values to the opportunity is something that I think you should thinking through will be really beneficial. Um, when we talk about stability and security, how do you connect the path to success and the opportunity? When we talk about personal and professional growth, how can this opportunity teach them new skills? When we talk about family and education, how can this opportunity bring them closer to their family? When we talk about connections and relationships, just taking the time to understand their goals, going in with a curious, open mindset, as I mentioned, I've spent two thirds of my life in India and I, I I barely know like a little part of it, right? So just taking the time, having that curious open mindset is something that will go a long way in helping form those connections. And with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Ricky who's gonna walk you through this awesome program we've got in place for you. Andrew, thank you so much, you guys. Show Andrew some love in the chat here. Um, I, I didn't even know that you were in India today. I don't even know what time it is there. So I even more appreciate you jumping in. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are so lucky to have Andrew on our team. And just, again, to take time out of his, his normal new skin job and to share with all of us uh, the culture and his background and his beautiful family um, so we can make sure that we're educated as we get ready to open India sometime next year. Now, the biggest question I want to answer, and I know I've said this several times, but tune in. If you're multitasking, tune in just for this right here. We get the question of, I know people today in India. Well, New Skin family, we cannot do anything currently in India today. You cannot do uh, any meetings, any Zoom meetings. So going over there, yes, it'd be nice. You can see a beautiful country, but you cannot share the new skin opportunity in India today, okay? That is very, very important to make sure that we are following the guidelines um, for when we do open. So again, everything that we've talked about today is what can you do in your own market today to get ready for the India launch, okay? So I'm probably gonna say that at least two more times before we're done. So we talked about that uh, India opportunity with just the sheer size of uh, the country. 
Andrew shared about the culture. And lastly, we are going to share about the India Founders Program. Okay. Uh, and so we got our, our great disclaimer here that I'm going to read to you real quick. The India Founders Program is intended to promote long-term growth through sales to customers. This program is going to outline how brand affiliates in um, in authorized markets, so this does not include mainland China, can prepare for the opening of the Indian market by becoming an India founder. And again, in New Skin India market is not open yet, so no pre-marketing activities may occur at this time, okay? And we have a lot more uh, information in our terms and conditions for you that I'll share about where to find that in just a moment. Okay, let's jump in and learn about the India Founders Program. Okay, you guys, there are two parts to the India Founders Program. First, there's the India Founders Recognition, okay? And that's where we're gonna celebrate you for all of your efforts to help us get ready for India. And then the second part of this will be the India Founders Incentive. And this is where you can earn some additional money based off of your performance. So let's walk through these two different opportunities. Okay, first up, we're gonna talk about the India Founder Recognition and what does that mean? So what do you need to do to be an India Founder? First, you need to become a brand rep. If you are not yet become a brand rep or higher, that's step one. Step two, is that you need to personally sponsor and develop at least one India eligible brand rep who is on your G1. So again, you need to be a brand rep for hire. You need to personally sponsor and help develop them um, who is of India, who is India eligible, and they need to be on your G1. Okay, so that's what you need to do. Now, what do you earn? exclusive limited time recognition throughout the year. So let's talk about the different types of founders that you can be. We're gonna have four different founder categories, okay? So you can be recognized as a bronze founder, a silver founder, gold founder, and platinum founder based on how many India eligible brand reps you have in your G1 through G6. Now, most important thing to note is that remember that second qualification point on that last screen said that you must have at least one G1 India eligible individual who is a brand rep right underneath you. So that is the key to all of this. Once you have that, then they can and you can help um, bring in lots more India eligible people and again, you can earn all the way up to a platinum founder. So we'll do a quick example on each of these. Okay, to be a bronze founder, that means that you would have anywhere from one uh, to nine India eligible brand reps. And again, you at least have to have one India eligible G1 brand rep. And then underneath them, um, you can have all the way up to, it says here on this example, eight to be a bronze founder. Um, but in each leg that you have, you can actually count up to 10 India eligible brand reps. So in this example, you have a India eligible G1 right underneath you, and then eight more India eligible BRs underneath them. So I would be considered a bronze founder. Okay, next, exa uh, next example, please. A silver founder is anyone who has 10 to 19 India eligible brand reps in your organization. So as you can see in this example, that I, I have two India eligible G1 brand reps. And underneath the one on the left, I have nine more India eligible BRs there. And on the right, underneath my G1, I have eight more India eligible brand reps. So that would give me a total of 19. So I would be a silver founder for the recognition. All right, the next example, we're gonna be talking about that gold founder. 
The gold founder is anywhere from 20 to 39 in India eligible G1 brand rep. And as you can see, I have four G1 India eligible brand reps right underneath me. And all of them have brought on lots of different people. So I would have a total here in this example of 32 India eligible brand reps. And last but not least, we have our platinum founder example. And this is for anyone who has over 40 plus India eligible brand reps. Okay. And again, most important thing is you could only count up to 10 India eligible brand reps per a G1, um, per that leadership team. Okay. All right, you guys. So this is our India founders program in terms of recognition. So I don't know, put in the chat, what do you want to be recognized for next year? Do you want to be a gold, a platinum, a silver? What do you want to be as an India founder program? All right, next slide. Okay, so again, that first opportunity is all about recognition. And it's all about what you're gonna do all the way between now and right before we open. The, the very last month before we open, and I'm just gonna give an example, okay? This month is totally fake. Let's pretend that we're going to open in um, July of next year. Again, that's totally fake. So if we're going to open in July of 2025, we're going to look at the month before we open, which would be June of 2025, to determine what founder you are. And that's where you'll get your recognition. Now, this next incentive that we're going to talk about would start in our fake example would start in July, the month that we open the market, and the incentive starts from there, okay? So let's talk about the India Founders Incentive. What do you need to do? Now, I know there's a lot of text on this screen, but let me try to simpl simplify it for you. To be a part of the India Founders Incentive, first, you must be an India founder, okay? We just explained what that means. So. If you want to participate in the incentive, you must be at least an India founder bronze with one G1 India eligible person, okay? The second thing that you need to do, once we open India, you must be a paid as Ruby or higher the month that we launch, and you have to maintain that title for the first 12 months that we open the market. And the third thing that you need to do to be an India founder or to participate in the India founder incentive is achieve 10,000 or more of India organizational sales volume. And that actually says per month, that, that's not right. In a, um, every time that you get 10,000 in India organizational sales volume, you can participate. And we're gonna look at the first 12 months of the year and look at your volume for the full 12 months, that India organizational sales volume, okay? So what do you earn with that? If I do all of those things, what do I earn? Well, on the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to see that you're going to receive one share for every 10,000 that you do at India organizational sales volume in that first year. And this is going to be a one-time promotional bonus. And how we're going to determine what that bonus looks like is we're going to look, uh, we're going to take up to 2% of India's first year revenue and share it back with you guys. So for those individuals who earn a share would get a portion of this bonus. Now, if you have one share, uh, you would get a little bit and the more shares you have, the more you would get. So it'll be proportional to the shares that you've earned, okay? So again, a lot of words on the screen. So what do I need to do to be a part of this India Founders Incentive? One, be an India founder. Two, once we launch, make sure I'm a Ruby plus or higher for the full 12 months. And number three, 
you're going to make sure that you can do um, at least 10,000 in India organi organizational sales volume in that first 12 months. And then you will be rewarded with these shares that will be paid out after the first year that we open. All right, next slide, please. So we, um, you can go in right now. If this gets you excited and you're like, yep, I'm gonna be a part of the India Founders Program so I can get all the recognition and so I'm eligible to participate in the incentive when we launch, I need more details. So here's where you can find it. You can go into your back office today, into your B&G. You're going to click on Office, Resources, and then up at the top, you're going to hit Program. Scroll down to the bottom and click on India Founders Program. It is listed there right now today and has all the details and TNCs that you would need. And if you have questions after you read it, let us know. We are here to help you so you can... Uh, be the most successful when we are running towards opening and after we launch. Next slide, please. And for more information on India, an easy the easiest way that I can jump onto the page is when you go onto your website, um, you do it from your phone or your computer, you can go up to where it says USD English or if it says Canada English or whatever your language is, Click on that, scroll down to where you see India and change it to India. Once you do that, you are going to see, um, first and foremost, the login for those India eligible individuals, where they go to login, it's right there. You're also going to see uh, any guidelines, any FAQs um, that we've talked about today, what you can and can't do. And uh, there's also an email at the very bottom of that page. So if you have more specific questions, they'll go to our team that is supporting the India launch. So let's see our call to action. I think that's what we have coming up next. That's right. Okay, so again, you just learned a lot, right? What do you need to do? First and foremost, start sharing or continue sharing that new skin opportunity in a current market, current open market. That means in a market that we do business in today. So not India, but anywhere else that we are open. And as you're sharing the opportunity, look for individuals who are India eligible. Get them started as a brand rep in your market today. Once they are started as a brand affiliate, they can log into that page that we just showed you guys and confirm their eligibility and upload those documents. It's very important that we get individuals um, logged in and signed up because that will determine when we open next year. And then last but not least, help them uh, become a brand rep, right? Help them in their new skin journey. And that way you will be able to participate in the India Founder Program. All right, you guys, thank you for joining us today. Um, for anyone that has non-English speakers on your team, we will get this recording on YouTube. And from there, you know, you can click on the subtitles and change it to your language. And we will get those links to the sales manager. So thank you for joining us. I hope you learned a lot. And we're going to show that awesome India video real quick that takes about 30 seconds. So stay tuned for that if you missed it at the beginning. And let's go out and see how many people want to be a part of this new skin opportunity. All right, everyone, take care. Thank you.